on this colder than anticipated day um, to discuss the new legislation proposed by the county board for raising the, raising the age to purchase tobacco products from the current age of 18 to 19 years old. We're here in front of uh, Rocky's Deli where the owner, Greg Santone, made a very bold decision about nine years ago to stop selling tobacco products out of his own personal convictions and also because this is a hub, as many of you know, of activity for um, our high school students. Uh, high school students certainly from Austin and Chappaqua and Briarcliff, and we just heard even from parts further afield, come to Rockies, and this is a place that is open 24-7 and uh, has a lot of business. So the, the willingness to step forward and say, we're not going to sell tobacco products because we're interested in our consumers' health, particularly our young people's health, was, was a very brave one. Um, I'm joined here by several of my colleagues on the board, Chairman Michael Kaplowitz, whose district Rockies is in, and Legislator uh, Mary Jane Shimsky. We also have several other co-sponsors for this legislation, Legislator Alfreda Williams, Legislator Lyndon Williams, Legislator Catherine Parker, and Legislator Peter Harkham are all co-sponsoring. And we've thrown open the invitation to all of our colleagues on the Board of Legislators to join us on this important legislation. Um, we chose the age of 19 because we believe it's a good start for us here in Westchester. We know that about 80% of juvenile smokers do get their cigarettes from other people who are above the legal purchase age. So we want to stop the flow of tobacco products to our youngest smokers. Um, we all know that according to the Department of Health and Human Services, uh, almost 500,000 people a year die of tobacco-related illnesses. It's the, it still continues to be the leading preventable cause of death in the United States. And we also know from recent recent um, scientific evidence that the younger a person starts with any kind of negative habit, the more powerful the addiction and the more difficult it is to, um, to stop that addiction. In fact, research tells us that people who begin smoking before the age of 18 are much more likely to be lifetime smokers than people who casually smoke at an begin smoking at an earlier age where the daily addiction doesn't take hold. So it's really important to stem that tide, and this is a good first step in, do, in doing that. In fact, um, a town in Massachusetts that raised their purchase price to 21 saw a documented 50% uh, decrease in the amount of juvenile smokers uh, about five years after that, after that age was raised. So uh, we do think that this is an important initiative. We're hoping that we're going to get broad bipartisan support. We know already that societal norms are changing and that there's retailers who have taken the initiative like Mr. Santone to say they're not going to participate in selling cigarettes and we do believe that this is a good a good uh, move in the positive direction for Westchester County. As you probably know Suffolk County just recently raised their purchase price age to 21 and New York City also has a purchase price age of 21. Nassau County is 19 so we're in line with the surrounding counties around the area in making this step and of course we know the change very frequently happens at the grassroots level, and we're hoping that counties taking this action will also inspire higher levels of government to, to do the same. So I have a few people here um, to speak. I would like to first ask the chairman of the County Board of Legislators, Michael Kaplowitz, a co-sponsor of this legislation, if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well done. Um, yes, welcome to uh, Newcastle, lovely Newcastle and my district for sure. Um, I'm very proud to stand here. Uh, as a um, co-sponsor and, frankly, to join uh, Legislator Borgia and, and thank her for her leadership in, in getting us to this point uh, and in leading us in this discussion. She is, if you will, now working the, uh, the hallways to, uh, to garner support, but I'm hopeful uh, and um, uh, do trust that in the end we will have uh, uh, sufficient support and hopefully widespread support to support this initiative. It makes sense. As one of the uh, sponsors of the legislation of yesterday, uh, which, which brought us to the uh, indoor smoking ban, which, as the, the majority leader indicated, percolated up to the state of New York in legislation that covered the entire state. Westchester in this region, uh, in many ways, is looked to um, in a leadership role, and, and Legislative Borgia is a leader for us now uh, on this particular item. I proudly stand here with her, um, hoping that uh, the, war the weather warms up, but uh, certainly the legislation will warm up as well, and I, I trust in the end that we will um, be banning uh, cigarette sales uh, uh, until age 19, uh, and that'll be doing the right thing for health, for safety, uh, and doing the right thing for uh, public welfare. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Legislator. Um, Legislator Shinsky, would you, another co-sponsor of the bill, would you care to yes, speak? Yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming here today. I am so glad that Legislator Borgia has initiated this effort. This is so, so very critical to the public health of our adolescents and our young adults. And here's why. We are seeing an epidemic of heroin addiction and problems with hard drugs at this point. And we know now through the best biochemistry, the best science shows us that it really all does start with tobacco smoking. And it's not just a matter of getting in with the wrong crowd or personal moral choice. It's a matter of biochemistry. Nicotine is a drug that when it enters certain parts of your brain, reduces your free will, reduces your ability to hold off from instant self-gratification. If you smoke as a very young person, you end up losing your ability to make a free choice and it makes you more susceptible to addiction to harder drugs. The National Institutes for Health, Harvard Medical School, a whole lot of our leading public health websites has information on this which confirms this. And in my district of Ardsley, Teresa Del Grosso, who's here today from the Ardsley Safe Coalition, sponsored a talk by a professor from the Harvard Medical School, um, Dr. Madras, who came to speak to us. And after her talk, I went to talk to her about our bill raising the, the age for buying tobacco products. And she almost got emotional and she said, anything you can do to delay even for a little bit someone's beginning cigarette smoking is a wonderful thing. It protects the public health in so many ways and not just from the dangers of cigarette smoking but from the dangers of other drugs too. She said the easiest way for someone to become a heroin addict is to begin with cigarette smoking. So this is not about free choice. This is about biochemistry. And this is about saving our young people whose brains do not mature until they're well into their 20s from the ravages of cigarettes and other drugs. And as I said, I'm so glad that Catherine has done this. And I look forward to getting this passed unanimously on the floor of the Board of Legislators. Thank you. Thank you so much, Legislator Shinsky. Boy, that's really powerful information. Um, I, I would like to also introduce uh, Assemblywoman Sandy Gale. If we talked a little bit about how some legislative processes start at the grassroots level and, and percolate upwards. Sandy, of course, as an assembly member for many, many years, has, uh, has worked with the county level. Sandy was also a county legislator, so she understands how you affect social change by working with a lot of uh, different component parts. So I would love to have uh, Assemblywoman Gale come up and give us a few words now. Thank you so much, Catherine, um, and it's great to be here. And it's wonderful that Westchester um, is going to go forward uh, with raising the purchase age of, of cigarettes um, to 19-year-olds. Try to, try to keep it out of the high school. As we all know, most of the seniors in high school are 18. They're not 19. So what we're trying to do is, is we all know that uh, the majority of times, or 60%, of the uh, purchasing uh, or the activity of getting cigarettes comes from older people. So if we can get those 18 and 19 year olds uh, not, not producing the cigarettes for our children, we'll be in a much better state. And I think back on the Surgeon General of the United States back in, in the 60s said, smoking is not good for us. And you know, before that, we really didn't know that. I don't think we knew that. And we have been progressing little by little in trying to put together other smoking legislation. You know, we started with no smoking in, in restaurants, no smoking in the office place, no smoking in bars, no smoking on MTA platforms, no smoking in playgrounds, which we just did last year on the state level. So we've been, you know, little by little smoking, no smoking in dorms. We've been taking this challenge on, and we really need to take it on with our very, very young people. And having Westchester adopt 19 is so significant. Westchester is a very large county. It's a very influential county. And by going forward with this, it's saying a lot to the rest of my colleagues in the state legislature. Because what we're trying to get is at least on a statewide level that there be 19 across the state. 
Uh, I've put legislation in. I've had it there for some time. It's been very difficult to get passed. So I think the fact that that Westchester is joining now Nassau County and Onondaga County, as well as four other states in this nation, uh, going to 19. One of the states is New Jersey, so close by. Uh, is significant. I don't think we should ever bar in any way anybody going to a higher age. Obviously, New York City has done that, 21, and, and Suffolk has just gone to 21, so we shouldn't bar that, but at least to raise the, the bar significantly from 18 to 19 to make sure that the youth of our, of our county and the counties around us are protected and that they can live um, a very healthy life ahead and, and not have the significant problems that come with smoking. Thank you very much, Catherine, Thank and the Thank board. You, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, many of us have had on the on the legis various legislative bodies have had a great deal of education by the next organization that's going to speak, Power Against Tobacco. Makeda James, who is the Westchester County Coordinator, has helped us on so many of our issues, including um, some issues like banning smoking in playgrounds, uh, other types of workplace bans. I know that Power Against Tobacco has uh, has taught a lot of legislators at the state level about some of the some of the hazards and some of the economic and health reasons why. Uh, tobacco use should be restricted and discouraged as much as possible. So we're delighted to have her here uh, to tell us some of the policy, um, some of the policy uh, facts that they have uncovered in, in their work for many, many, many years. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, as uh, Legislator Borgia mentioned, I'm with Power Against Tobacco, and um, it is a proven fact that implementation of strong public health policies uh, create a shift in social norms. Over the past 50 years, we've seen um, several of the, and we've benefited all from the positive effects of strong tobacco control policies on both state and local levels. Um, because of policies like the Clean Indoor Air Act and smoke-free worksite laws implemented here in Westchester County, we've seen a decline in smoking rates, um, we've seen increased quit attempts, we've also seen a greater awareness about the dangers of secondhand smoke. Um, and we are absolutely delighted and excited to be um, in a county that uh, puts strong value and emphasis on um, developing strong policies. Raising the age um, for buying tobacco would only further um, enhance our goals towards creating healthier communities in Westchester County. Um, by limiting youth accessibility, curtailing youth initiation, you know, our county is moving, um, uh, I'm sorry, and saving the county money in health expenditures that smoking-related illnesses cause in the long run. I'd like to take an opportunity to actually thank our Board of Legislators and all of our state legislators and law lawmakers as well, um, who, again, have been very progressive with implementing pol strong policies in Westchester County that have benefited us, benefit us all. And also, I'd be remiss if I did not mention the significance of what Rocky's Deli did back in 2007 by uh, refusing to, or I'm sorry, stopping to, I apologize, I'm a little nervous this morning, and cold. Um, <laughs> By eliminating tobacco sales completely, they stood in the face of opposition and they did something that no one else was willing to do at that time. But that has had a significant impact on um, the tobacco control and, and the work that we do. Again, um, encouraging our lawmakers to continue to implement policies and just shifting that social paradigm. Tobacco. While the issue of tobacco is no longer a sexy topic, it's still a very important topic because it is still the leading cause of preventable death. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all thank of you. you. Very much. Also, thank you for being here. Mr. Santone, would you like to say a few words? I don't know if you're the heroic owner of Rocky's Deli. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't. Well, f thank you very much. Uh, I have no prepared comments, but I'd like to just say that I uh, wholeheartedly support this effort to uh, reduce the sales of cigarettes. I made a difficult decision years ago to stop selling them here at Rockies. It's a, it's a personal choice, but for uh, ethical and moral reasons, I just felt like I didn't want to profit from a product that uh, hurts so many people's lives. So I made that decision. Some people questioned it. Some people were very supportive. 
but overall I've continued to uh, sell what I say is good food and drink and uh, <laughs> but not cigarettes and uh, and we, we continue on so I'd like to uh, yeah. applaud the efforts of all the legislators and uh, concerned organizations to uh, try to make people healthier thank, thank you. you thank you very much Speaking just as a representative parent of the Ostling School District, we certainly applaud you. Um, and speaking of that, I would like to call up now, uh, ask Alice Joslow to come. She is representing two organizations that have been very um, uh, steadfast in the issue of preventing tobacco illness and death, and that is Ostling's Communities That Care, as well as the Open Door Family Medical Health Center. Alice? Hi, thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, even on this very chilly day. Um, Cigarette, um, cigarette use since 1964 was highlighted by the Surgeon General and we're sort of at a 50 year mark now where a new report has been issued by the Surgeon General and they clearly state that tobacco um, accessible policies related to the access of tobacco are critical with regard to pre um, prevention and um, Big Tobacco continues to um, work on their aggressive strategies to promote the use of tobacco and definitely, definitely target our teens. So this is a very clear message and I actually really like the way um, Assemblywoman Galef said, this is really taking it out of the high school level and that's critical for us to protect our teens. Um, two very interesting um, facts from the recent Surgeon General's report are that one out of three cancer deaths can be preventable by um, preventing people smoking lung, kidney, pancreas, colon, bladder, liver, and many other organs are affected with cancer from can are affected with cancer from tobacco use. And to me, this is the most sobering statistic that the Surgeon General put out. 5.6 million children who are alive today will ultimately die early from smoking if we do not do more to reduce current smoking rates. That's a very sobering statistic. 5.6 million children who are alive today will die from smoking-related illness if we don't do more. And I just want to put that in context. That's one out of every 13 kids alive today. That's two out of 27 kids in the average third grade classroom. So anything that we can do to support our legislators to prevent the onset of smoking in teenagers is critical. And as um, so many of you have said, this is really about protecting teens. It's a protect protecting teen brain development. So thank you to the legislature, to the assembly, to Rocky's Deli who makes great sandwiches <laughs> as a consumer of their um, services through three uh, teenagers. Thank you to all of you for taking this courageous step. It's very important that we continue to work to protect our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. We're happy to take some questions if anyone has anything they'd like to ask. Martin? Correct. Correct. Right, right, right. I, ha I happen to know that because I was 17 when the drinking age was 18, then I was 19 when it went to 21. That was kind of bad for me at the time, but perhaps a good thing. But, uh, but um, you know, uh, we, I, I am open to the thought of going to 21. I did think that my, my most significant reason for doing 19 was because I thought it was very important to stem the flow of tobacco products in our high schools. And we do know that there are, as uh, Assemblywoman Galev said, many high school seniors are 18, but there aren't too many 19-year-olds in our high schools. So um, although I will say that if there's support among my legislative colleagues to amend this piece of legislation to make it 21 from the beginning, I'm certainly not opposed to that. I think that we do see from surrounding counties like New York City and Suffolk County that there is, um, that that is a workable piece of legislation. So it is 19 right now for uh, sort of practical reasons, but the conversation is still open to go to 21. Anybody else?